Columbia, Houston, Simo on air to ground one and two when you're ready. We're ready. Roger, Jim, the uh, MMT had uh, all players in on the meeting uh, right through from the factory, and the consensus is they just do not understand the behavior of fuel cell two. Uh, even though your folks' efforts have uh, done a good job towards stabilizing the problem, uh, it's significantly out of family. And so uh, it will uh, shorten the mission, and we're looking at a TIG uh, on Tuesday for us down here. That's at an MET of 3.22.14. And, of course, we're looking at uh, the various types of entries, uh, looking at procedures to reduce the load, loss of one fuel cell type procedures, and we'll be discussing those over the next couple hours. Okay, that's certainly disappointing, but we know you guys put your best effort forward and you're doing the right thing, and uh, we appreciate uh, all the work that's gone into that. 3.22.14, and I imagine between now and then we'll uh, keep marching forward with as much science as we can. Exactly right. If you could continue with the nominal timeline for now for uh, completing as much science as possible, and we've pretty much worked up the procedure to reduce the load and looking at potentially eventually safe in a fuel cell, but we haven't made that decision yet. We'll have words for you shortly. If you would like uh, a face-to-face -face with uh, some of the players down here, we can easily set up an OCA video conference. Yeah, that would probably be helpful. Maybe uh, after you've gone through uh, your procedures and worked out your plan, and then we can have a face-to-face. -face. Okay, we'll pick a time in the next little while here. Questions for you. Hello from Rockford. Among the experiments you're conducting, you're lighting as many as 200 small fires to study flames in space. Does this make you nervous at all? One of the things that we work very hard on the space shuttle program is to be safe. We have a safety panel in, a, in both at Kennedy Space Center. We have safety troops. We have safety folks at Johnson Space Center. They all work very hard to make sure all of our payloads are safe. The combustion on experiments on this flight, of course, got extra attention. It's one of the reasons why it's taken this long to fly rack size combustion experiments, because in order to give the science investigators the access they need to run experiments, yet still have the experiments be safe, was a very difficult design issue. And we've been involved in the last stage of that price of process and know that they work very hard and the feel completely safe with the experiments we have on board. Thank you. Roger Crouch, you have managed missions from the ground but never been on a flight. As we show our viewers some pictures of yesterday's launch, describe for us what it felt like and was it what you expected? Well, it um, wasn't quite what I expected. I expected the first two minutes to be real, real, take a real long time because the solid rocket boosters were the things that really give you a lot of thrust. In fact, though, the first Two minutes were over in about like 20 seconds, it seemed to me like. We were all on the mid-deck down below uh, doing high fives and shaking hands with each other. And after we got to the 50-mile limit, the commander announced that we were truly in space from an astronaut point of view. And we were just so elated. It was like, a, I guess, a little child maybe just screaming and hollering about the first really great thing they'd ever done in their life. I felt really super about it. Janet, many of our viewers would like to know what it's like to be weightless in space. Describe for us what that's like and what problems it can pose for you. One of the f fun things with flying with rookies like Roger and Greg and Terrace, other payload specialists, is they say all the things that you remember happened on the first flight. Both Roger and Greg have been talking about how they feel like they're hanging upside down all the time, which is true, because the fluid shifts causes the liquid that's normally pooled in your feet to shift up into your head, and it feels like you're hanging upside down all the time. There's a lot of things like that that sort of catch you by surprise. But we've flown a lot of missions now. We're the 83rd Space Shuttle mission, and we've had a lot of experience with how to counteract those senses and how to prepare yourself pre-flight and in-flight, like drinking lots of fluids and eating lots of high-fiber foods or taking other fiber supplements, et cetera. So we've got a pretty good plan for how to make sure that we can perform at full efficiency while we're up here. I guess the other thing that, that you feel to imagine is it's just fun to float around in space. It's just fun. Everything you do is tremendously 
enjoyable because you're completely free to float. It's like you're a little kid in some kind of Peter Pan movie or something like that. Uh, the, the comet Hellbop, of course, is drawing a lot of attention. Are you getting a good look at it right now? This is for any one of you. Yeah, we, uh, of course, get to see it every time uh, we have a sunset. And we've been real busy the first couple days, as you can imagine. But uh, Don Thomas and I got a good look at it with the binoculars uh, just a few hours ago. And it's it's really uh, incredible to see it and to imagine that the last time human eyes saw that comet was when they were building the Great Pyramids 4,000 years ago. And uh, it really makes us feel special to be orbiting the Earth in a spaceship looking at the Earth and the comet in the same glance, it also makes you wonder what human civilization will, will be like the next time the comet visits us. And uh, I think all of us here feel quite certain that that will involve uh, colonization of space, and we're real proud to be part of the baby steps we're taking in that direction. We're wondering, you know, with, with the, seeing you go up in space more often and seeing you on television, do you think Americans still have the same enthusiasm for this they had years ago? Well, one of the things that I was privileged to do during the training was to go to a lot of elementary schools and talk to the children there. And I do believe that there's a certain lethargy in a lot of uh, the adults in America about the interest in the space program, but when you talk to kids and you talk to them about space and their minds start to expand, you can just see the energy within the room, and it's an incredible energy that these kids generate just in their thought processes about going to space and about the space program. So I think there's a lot of enthusiasm there, and maybe people just are, are at a younger age when they're really feeling it so much. The people in an older age maybe have uh, other worries too much right now. Okay, good heads up, and I'll uh, give you uh, statuses as I push through these steps.
Okay, that's complete. Okay, Don, you can follow through with FO2 step alpha to repower on the EXP unit. Okay, copy, FO2, step alpha here to repower. Okay, when you've completed those steps, I'll give you an experiment command we would like for you to enter. Space Lab Step Charlie dot seven of FO five has been completed. Moving on to Step Delta dot one. Copy. Chamber pressure is reading zero point zero zero atmospheres. Oh, we copy that zero decimal zero zero atmosphere. Space lab. When I remove the dust cumber from the DCE experiment, I can see hear gas going into the chamber. I can't put the dust cover back on, although if I press harder, I probably can. Columbia, Houston for Jim. And uh, she's coming up. Are you calling us about that safe lab link term? Yeah, we're looking at that, and we don't have any steps for you right now. We're checking into a couple of things. Uh, we may be calling you to a mail later. Uh, what we'd like for you to now, do now, though, is um, we've made the decision down here to go ahead and safe fuel cell 2. First, uh, however, we have a number of power down steps that are, will involve both orbiter and payload equipment for you to perform. And we've come up with some priorities, so we're just going to talk, um, talk you through a, a few steps at a time. And we'll be watching the, you know, the power levels as we power down each of the equipment so we know when we're below a good level.